Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death worldwide, with 17.8 million deaths per year in 2008 and a projected 23.3 million per year by 2030. Statins are the most commonly prescribed drug for prevention of cardiovascular disease, and currently there are more than 40 million people worldwide on statin medication, including 40% of Australians over the age of 65. So what are statins and can we all benefit from taking them? Cholesterol is the type of fat used by our bodies for important everyday functions such as making hormones and building and repairing cells. Cholesterol is transported in the body by lipoproteins, HDL which is a high density lipoprotein or good cholesterol and LDL which is a low density lipoprotein or bad cholesterol. HDL is beneficial as it allows cholesterol to be processed and excreted from the body. LDL, on the other hand, carries cholesterol from the blood into the cells of the body, and this can become deposited in your artery walls, causing a buildup of cholesterol known as plaque, which can cause the arteries to narrow. This is known as atherosclerosis and may result in angina, heart attack, or stroke. Grade A clinical evidence has determined that high plasma LDL cholesterol must be the primary concern in cardiovascular disease prevention. So how do statins work? Statins reduce levels of LDL production in the liver by competitively inhibiting the action of HMG-CoA reductase, an enzyme which is a key component in the manufacture of cholesterol in the liver. HMG-CoA reductase normally catalyzes the reduction of acetyl-CoA to mevalinate, a sterile precursor which is eventually transformed to cholesterol. Here with us today we have interventional cardiologist Dr. Delena Mai. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of taking statins? The value of statins in preventing heart disease has clearly been established, but they need to be taken with care and knowledge of their side effects. Large-scale statin trials have demonstrated significant decreases in LDL cholesterol and a reduction in major cardiovascular events. Overall, you're looking at a 1 in 5 coronary deaths being prevented through statin use. However, all drugs do carry side effects. For those at high risk of having a heart attack or a stroke, the clinical evidence shows the benefits outweigh the risk. So can you talk us through some of these side effects? Sure. Mild muscle pain or weakness known as myalgia is one of the most common side effects of statin use, occurring in 5-15% to 15 of, percent of patients. Whereas more severe muscular side effects such as muscle inflammation or rhabdomyolysis or muscle breakdown have been reported but occur very rarely. Um, there's been a fair bit of controversy surrounding statins and the risk of developing diabetes. What are the risks? Yes, there is a slight increased risk of diabetes that has been identified in statin studies. In a recent large-scale trial, there was one extra case of type 2 diabetes for every 255 people treated with a statin. However, the study showed that the benefits of taking a statin to lower cardiovascular risk greatly outweighed the possible risk of developing diabetes. And what about the issue of overprescription? Do you think that uh, statins just discourage people from making lifestyle changes? In recent years, there has been a lot of debate surrounding overprescriptions of statins. However, guidelines from the National Heart Foundation emphasise the importance of absolute risk assessment in guiding clinical decisions. And sorry, can you explain to us what absolute risk is? Absolute risk is the probability of a patient experiencing a cardiovascular event in the next five years. So providing that Australian doctors prescribe in accordance within these guidelines, overprescription shouldn't be an issue. So... Let's say you've got a patient that comes in with high cholesterol. How do you assess whether to prescribe? For low to moderate risk groups, I'd recommend making lifestyle modifications such as diet and quitting smoking, retest levels in six months, and then consider pharmacological intervention if there's no change. For high risk groups, it's recommended that lifestyle modifications are implemented in addition to pharmacological intervention with a sudden to reduce risk. So can we all benefit from taking them? Well, prevention is key. Therefore, effective management of modifiable risk factors will reduce the risk of developing high cholesterol and subsequent risk of cardiovascular disease. Statins should only be taken when absolute risk dictates it necessary. In this event, yes, we can benefit from statins. And one last question for you, Doctor. New generation statins such as Rosuvastatin, sold as Crestor, are there any genuine advantages? 
Well, currently that's the only commercially available third generation statin. Um, clinical trials have shown that Crystal has enhanced inhibition of HMG-CoA reductase, resulting in a greater efficacy at reducing cholesterol, and has actually been shown to be superior to other statins in reducing a patient's LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, as well as increasing levels of good HDL cholesterol. That's all we've got time for today. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. The efficacy of statins in lowering cholesterol and thus reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease is indisputable. However, pressure now needs to go on our doctors to follow correct prescribing practice to ensure that the right patients are getting the right treatment.